Well, here we are for Wednesday's recording. Now, we left Ash and Gabble. Feather has retreated, hasn't she, with the other Daplanders. Um, are they going to go back or are they going to follow them? Well, I think we all know Hazel. Ash is definitely going to follow them. He just can't help himself, can he? And I think we also know that Gabble's not going to let him do it on his own. He's very protective over his brother, isn't he? And especially so as he's injured. So let's see what happens. Don't give me that look. You saw how they reacted. I need to find those Dunkelanders. I need to know why. He laboured at the ground. His face was set, but his breath came in gasps and his legs shook with the effort. But you can head home. I don't need you here. Oh, right, so I'll go back and leave you here, shall I? said Gabble. Ha! Huh. The taker will find you. There was a sharp intake of breath. Ash stopped dead and wheeled to face Gabble. He already did, Ash hissed. Gabble felt his patience straining. For the mother's sake, Ash, the taker's just a story. Story? Ha! Ah! Ash gestured angrily at the stains on his face. Does this look like a story to you? No, it looks like an ill rat who needs to rest. Gabble returned. You say you saw the taker, but that doesn't mean it happened, and it doesn't make this a good idea. Ash's eyes widened, and abruptly his anger was gone. You think I made it up? The words were quiet and small. He placed a paw on Gabble's fur. Gabble, I wouldn't. Of all rats, I... Ash's whiskers shook. He swallowed and looked away. I saw him, I did, I saw him, and I thought at least you would believe me. Mm. Ash, Gabble began, he gave me a name, and now his eyes were hard again, defiant. A name? From his own lips, Ash turned away. A strange intensity had taken hold of his features. He whispered it to me. It was payment for what he took. What he took? I don't understand. Something that could have been a laugh escaped Ash's lips. You mean you can't see? Ash took his paw from Gabble's fur and gestured at his scrawny flanks. Look at me. Look at me. This is what he took. He saw inside of me. He saw the rat that I wanted to be. He saw my future. Ash's mouth twisted, and that's what he took. Gabble huddled down tight against Ash's words. Um, you need more time. I've had time, Ash shouted. I've eaten your mother-forsaken grain and slugs. I've cringed beneath the hedge and pretended to be me. Red tears rolled down Ash's cheeks. But it's an act. Can't you see that? I wanted to be a big rat. And now I can't even walk properly. He took me away, Gabble. Ash thumped his chest. Me. Silence extended between them, broken only by Ash's breath and rustling grasses. The rising wind ruffled their fur and Gabble could think of nothing to say. What name? he said finally. Ash blinked. He looked up with hope in his eyes. What name did the taker give you? A smile crept onto Ash's lips. You believe me then? And Gabble left with little choice nodded. Yes, all right, I do. Ash grabbed him by the shoulders. Thank you, thank you. Then he leaned forwards, bringing his lips close to Gabble's ear. He called me Foder, the Shining One. Gabble pulled back, breaking Ash's grip. He stared at his brother in horror. Oh, mother, no. Ash had taken his name. He opened his mouth to speak, unsure of what he was about to say. But then his eye caught a movement, a dark blur spilled from the shadows to their left. The night seemed to pool and surge forwards. A single thought shot through Gabble. Cat! Gabble slammed his forepaws into Ash's shoulder sending his brother tumbling away. Then he leapt in the opposite direction, 
a colossal form plunged into the grasses where an instant before they had been standing. Its outstretched claws smacked into the ground and Gabble was up and running in an instant. He pounded down the Notre Dame border, hurdling stones and tearing through grasses, feet ripping at the ground. Dimly he heard a hacking noise, far behind, almost lost in the night. Ash. Gabble swerved madly into the lee of a pile of square-edged rocks and huddled there listening. He could hear only the wind drowning out even his own rapid breathing. But that gave Gabble hope. If Ash had found cover then, the breeze might at uh, the breeze might mask his scent and his sound. There might still be a chance. Gabble grabbed for the nearest rock and hauled and scrabbled his way up the pile. Fragments tumbled from beneath his feet, but in moments he had gained the top. He crouched low, exposed in the taker's moon, and buffeted by the wind, and stared back the way he had come. The verge was a patchwork of shadows, muddling in the breeze. They surged and retreated, playing amidst the rippling grass. To his left, Notre Dame stared emptily back its stone and shadows unmoving, and at his right lay the broken field. Gabble dismissed them, concentrating on the verge. That's where Ash would be, in a small, dark refuge. There, at the very edge of Notre Dame, from the gloom beneath the tussock, the shade held the merest suggestion of a lighter patch. Gabble watched it until he was certain, and his heart began to race. It was ash. He was sure of it. The breeze whipped up a cloud of dust that twirled from Notre Land straight into Gabble's face. He narrowed his eyes against it and turned his head away. And, as he did, he saw movement in the field and a flash of yellow-green eyeshine. The cat was padding towards Ash's hiding place. Gabble closed his eyes. What could he do? From nowhere, a memory arrived. Their time in Notre Dame. Shrill, the rattling and his threats. I call the cat on you. Gabble's eyes snapped open. Call the cat. Not good. Not good. But his body stood up on its hind legs and swayed in the breeze. And up on his pile of rocks, he raised his chin. Mother, protect me, he thought. Hey, ugly, he yelled. Hey, this way. He jumped up and down, squeaking, and in the distance, the slick black patch paused. That's right, I'm talking to you. Who do you think you are, hunting sick rats? Huh? Come and hunt me. I'll give you a run. Wait a minute. Eyes shone out of the darkness. They fixed on his position, and they vanished. A flurry of movement, and the cat was gone. Gavel froze. Had it seen him? Was it coming, or was it still tracking ash? He raked the landscape, seeking the predator. The shifting moonlight and swirling scent made it almost impossible. A rustle ahead and to his right, Gabble's head jerked to follow it. Nothing. He crouched, ears, nose and whiskers twitching. Wind, dust, moon, breathing, heart, blood. Eyes and ears to watch the front, scent from behind. He shifted, trying to keep the wind at his back, but it danced around. It brought a snatch of Cat scent evil in his nostril. He heard a tiny clinking sound and turned to it and stopped breathing. Notre Dame was gone, blotted by greyness that resolved into a claw spike tipped, outstretched, just beyond striking distance, and behind the claw yellow eyes, pupil wide and fixed hungrily on him. With a single panic squeak, Gabble was down the rocks, on the grass, and running for his life. Behind him, stones slid and toppled, and pools thudded to the ground. A low growl, and the cat was after him. Terror, muscles and paws, and whiskers that flicked against grasses as he bolted down the verge, away from Ash and the clan lands. A sense of movement behind, and Gabble dodged. Claws lashed, and he leapt left, then scrappled right, as the cat pounced again, landed badly, mewed in frustration. For an instant, the cat sprawled and distance opened between them. But then the ground beat again to the sound of pursuit. Spurred on, Gabble raced, head up, 
seeking shelter. Nothing, nothing. Then there on the Notre Dame border, a frame of tangled metal lurched into view. Gabble, almost sobbing, wrenched his body around and hurtled for it, breath raw in his throat. The frame's base was lost in choking grass, no gap, no shelter. But almost invisible in the pattern of the structure, Gabble spied a hole, a mere rat width across. He dived for it. He grabbed at the metal and clawed and battled at the plants that twined through it. His head and shoulders thrust through, squirmed clear, but his haunches jammed. The ghost of imagined claws swiped for him with back-breaking strength. He fought, raking and shoving, dragging and squeaking, and with a final heave, the metal released him, and Gamble tumbled, Gabble, sorry, tumbled, face first into darkness. A moment to lie, panting, then up, up on quivering limbs. He turned his paws and whiskers to the metal, scanning the space and seeking openings. His frantic search found nothing but a gap at the soil surface, enough to permit, to permit moon glow, but not a cat's paw. Night air wafted in, cooling Gabble's fur as he slumped, shuddering with exhaustion against the frame. Safe, thank the hunter. Paul stepped softly up to the metal cage. Gabble rolled to his feet and backed as far from the sound as he could. A dark shape moved behind the rat hole and warm breath poured cat stench into the space. The cat growled a low sound, feral and visceral. Then it moved away, padding through the grass and around to the far side. The moon glow was snuffed as it crouched. More breath steamed through the frame. A pork clattered the metal and withdrew. Gabble huddled, barely breathing, as the cat circled, now clawing, now sniffing for gaps. But it found no way in. It climbed on top of the pile. The frame sagged with a little rasping sound and clinks and tinkles as pebbles and soil rained down. But the structure held fast. The cat jumped down, it trapped once more around the outside, then gave one final sniff and stalked away to be lost in the grass. Wow! Well, the description of Gabble running and trying to escape that cat, I felt like I was running with him. Thank goodness he escaped. I'm having a newfound affection for rats. I can't believe I'm saying that because they've never been a favourite creature of mine. But, as this story goes on, making me think of them in a different light. And that's always good, isn't it? To look at things with new eyes. It's really good. So, that was the end of chapter seven. Uh, chapter six, sorry. And chapter seven will be next. So, again, I hope you've had a lovely Wednesday. Back in the rhythm of things a bit now. And so nice to see all your friends again, I would think. So, I will leave it there for now, Hazel. And check in with you again tomorrow. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.